Hi there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. In this video, I'll take you through the top 10 indie games I'm most looking forward to playing in February 2023. First off, Tales the Backbone Preludes is the follow-up to Backbone, which made our Game of the Year rundown in 2021. Taking place before the events of Backbone, this new adventure is once again set within an alternate reality Vancouver, which like its first instalment, oozes with atmosphere thanks to its regal looking pixel art and a world inspired by Art Deco and post-Soviet architecture. This time, you'll step into the shoes of four characters, each of their stories reflecting on different formative moments in their lives. Like the original tales, I'm attracted to this prelude not only in how it looks, but on what the narrative direction this game looks likely to take and how your game character choices reflects and cascade throughout the adventure. With double the word count of the original, branching dialogues and storylines, I'd be surprised if I only gave this one playthrough. Tales the Backbone Preludes came out on February 2nd on Windows via Steam. At number 9, this slow builder of a trailer, although don't let the initial sparseness of things put you off, Plan B Terraform is coming out in early access on the 15th of February with a demo for you to try out on the game Steam homepage. I've had half an hour or so with this in making this video and yep, I can see the potential here. Doing all of this on a planetary level with real-time global weather simulations and all the other aspects you'd need to build up a planet from scratch are all here. So yes, Plan B Terraform joins a highly competitive genre although the demo has left me wanting much, much more. Up next and at number 8 we have Rise of Fox Hero. We've had a fair few smatterings of Fox themed games of late and given how pleasing all of this looks, I can see myself getting stuck into this when it launches on PC on the 17th of February. There's also a demo to play as this video comes out and I'm about five or so minutes from having played it for a good half hour as I pen this little script. As you can see, Rise of Fox Hero is a colourful 3D platformer that reminds me of a few games from way back when, and I honestly wish there were more of these games coming to the market than we typically see each year. While I've only had a short time with it, the combat feels fun and perfectly suited to this type of game. So far, the fighting hasn't been a challenge, although I suspect that's fully intended. Who wants Dark Souls or even Tunic levels of combat when the aim here is really all about the platforming and, well, having fun? I've really enjoyed how the camera system works, with you needing to change the perspective in where the camera points. This feels natural and intuitive, with you needing to explore different views to find routes ahead and in-game secrets. Rise of Fox Hero is shaping up to be rather good and I hope it finds its place in the market. And if this would ever come out on the Switch, I think it would probably fly. Pick up the phone. What's happening? I've got some news. Okay. I signed up for speed dating. Why are you telling me this? Are you sure? I might have signed us both up. Coming out rather appropriately on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. At number 7 we have 10 Dates, the sequel to the interactive romantic comedy Five Dates which came out in November of 2020. As far as I can tell this interactive film come game has come from nowhere. I don't recall seeing anything about this until a few days ago when the trailer popped into my social media feeds. 10 Dates features a lady called Misha from London who manages to trick her best friend a chap called Ryan to go on a speed dating event with her. Now. I can't go into anything like this without comparing it to the works of Sam Barlow. Sam's her story and telling lies were partially responsible for me changing my career and stepping into a creative role from nearly 20 years working in technology. His recent immortality is perhaps the greatest indie game I've ever played, so I will hold 10 dates against what Sam's been able to achieve with such a genre. I can see me playing this over a few evenings with my significant other on the TV in our main room. I'm wanting to see how the game implements what the developers are calling a real-time relationship status, with it also coming with a streamer setting, which is a nice little touch so players can interact with their viewers to make them part of the decision-making process. 
10 dates is headed out on all of the consoles and PC via Steam together with the Epic Store and it's also coming to mobiles. I was a little reticent on including Flame Keeper in this month's rundown, but I've put it in at number 6. Its Steam homepage lists the launch date as to be announced, although the IGDB has it coming out on February the 24th. Either way, I thought I'd include it, if anything, to shine a little bit more of a spotlight on its direction. During my break from the whole of last year, I can't recall picking up and playing any more than a couple of action roguelites, a genre that's usually at the top of my go-to playlists. However, there's something here with Flame Keeper that has me really rather interested in what it's looking to do. Much of this is linked to the game's aesthetic and art style, but also the main character themselves, as you happen to be playing as a lump of coal, which I believe is pretty darn fantastic. In some ways, I'd like for the trailer to have been... and, well, just linger that slightly bit longer on the combat side of things. The action here hints at something quite strong, although for my taste, the cuts are too quickly implemented. I'd also wish to have seen more of the upgrade systems at play here, Always a big deal breaker for me, although as I've already said, I'll give Flame Keeper a day one play if it does release this month or at some point in the future. Now at number 5, and let's get this out of the way right away. Yes, Panorama Prologue looks an awful lot like the recent Dorf Romantic. Let's call it a tribute, shall we? Like its look-alike, this feels somewhat serene and very relaxing especially with the warm and fuzzy visuals when they're paired back with this score like the one you can hear in the background. It's all positively dreamlike and something I'm sure folks who played its namesake will be happy to pick up and play to while away the hours. It's clearly a city builder where you play with the various combinations of tiles where you're free to experiment as you play. Panorama Prologue is out on Windows via Steam February the 21st. Who hasn't always wanted to lace up a pair of fancy roller, or more likely hover blades, and take to the city's skylines come the evening? Now up at number 4, Rooftop Renegades caught my eye when scrolling through the awfulness that is the Nintendo eShop, with the neon burying itself deep into my brain. Now I fully expect to be utterly rubbish at this action platformer that looks to be all about progression and finding a flow of movement as I lost a whole heap of motor control on my left thumb a few years ago. I've also never really gelled with the keyboard and mouse controls even after years of trying. However, this won't stop me having a go at this, and I'm most looking forward to trying to play it in a local couch co-op mode with friends and family. I think this could be our next must-play couch co-op game, as even though I'll suck at it, it does look so much fun. I'm also thinking this might be a bit of a hit for those within the speedrunning community, which is something else I like to watch in on as I have zero skills there myself. Rooftop Renegades is out on Windows via Steam, PlayStation, Xbox and the Nintendo Switch, February 17th. At number 3 we have Eldorand. Why settle for a game that promises just plain old boring violence? Who needs peace, love and understanding when we can pick up Eldorand on February the 16th with it offering fantastic violence instead. All jokes aside and marketing spiel be gone, and I'm pretty sure this will go down rather well with many long-term and new friends of the channel. I've leaned away from these kind of games over the past few years, although felt it looked strong enough to make it into the pointy end of this month's rundown. As you can probably guess, Eldorand is an action platformer with RPG elements, where you're able to customise your character to make the best of your individual playstyle. There's also plenty loot to find from fallen enemies and while out and about the place. Players will also be able to craft and upgrade their weapons in something I'm sure will sell well and find a dedicated fan base. This one's coming to PC via Steam. At number two, and for me, the first of two really fascinating games in this rundown, we have Blanc. This was one of the highlights from the Nintendo Mini Direct from last summer. All of this is hand-drawn, with it featuring a little wolf cub and a tiny fawn separated from their families after a snowstorm. It's a collaborative experience either online or via local play. With the online experience, I'd wager we'll be delivering a mixed bag of helpful folks 
and those looking for much mirth from generally messing about. Either way, players will need to make do with each other's character's strengths and weaknesses. For example, the fawn is a little more sprightly and able to jump into higher ledges than the wolf. However, the wolf is more adapt to find their way through smaller places. The game is completely black and white and has no dialogue or voiced parts. I'm honestly really looking forward to see how the developers have implemented the cues and directions needed from the environment alone. Any missteps here could result in a good deal of frustration, although the trailer gives enough hints at how this type of direction will work. One other thing, I'm fully expecting for my heart to be broken along the way with this one. I hope I'm wrong, although that's how I'm guessing it may turn out. Blanc launches on Valentine's Day, February the 14th, on the Nintendo Switch, and on PC via Epic and Steam. At number one, and the game I'm most excited to play in full this February is Dune Shining. It's been in early access for a little while, although it's getting its full release on February the 17th. This was a very late addition to this rundown. I didn't see it until after I'd finished the original video, although having spent 20 minutes with the demo, I just had to add it to the top of this February 2023 list. How best to describe this? Well, it's best to think of this as a puzzler platformer with golf-like mechanics. Now, I just can't abide golf, perhaps aside with the Masters at Augusta, where my focus is all about serious flower and lawn envy. I can't recall anything quite like this before, where you play as a wandering mage called June. I expected something like this to be quite lore and story heavy, although my experience with the demo so far has been fairly light-hearted. You're tasked with putting balls into nests, with you able to manipulate the physics and environment around you to puzzle your way about the place. The demo left a huge smile on my face. It's very clever and very beautiful to look at, and while it won't change my opinion on the sport in real life, I honestly can't wait to get hold of the full game later in the month. So which of these are you looking forward to playing? Drop me a note in the comments, and if you haven't done so already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Many thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with another indie game video.